Avril Lavigne is quite an influential figure. She's gone on to influence newer artists like Rina Sawayama and Billie Eilish, to hip-hop artists like Lil Uzi Vert and Rico Nasty. She's largely responsible for the early and mid-thousands pop-punk craze, and that sound has even carried over into artists like Taylor Swift, especially on her 2010 album Speak Now. Avril Lavigne is undoubtedly an icon and she had a consistently successful run, but as time progressed, she appeared to move away from the spotlight, but why? Well, there's a few things to uncover, so let's start from the beginning. Avril's demos caught the attention of L.A. Reid and he immediately signed her at only 16 years old. She was destined for greatness. Let Go is Avril's debut album, and it was released in 2002, at the age of 18. In four days, I sold 500 something thousand copies of my record worldwide. So um, this, all this, you know, hard work paid off. Let Go was an instant success that launched Avril to global superstardom. With pop classics like Complicated, Skater Boy, and I'm With You, Avril differed from her peers. She did not take on sex appeal, she was not a pristine Barbie image, neither did she indulge in prefab teen pop. She didn't wear glamorous dresses or have the perfect aesthetic, and a major thing which was a bit more rare amongst her peers is that she wrote all of her songs. She was the cool edgy girl who wrote songs about heartbreak, having fun, and angst. In many ways, I like to consider Avril one of the true first singer-songwriters of the early thousands youth pop scene. I would say she carved a path that artists like Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, and Hayley Williams followed at the beginning of their career. Avril's persona made her a relatable figure and definitely a standout artist from the norm during that time. She wasn't the girl next door, she was your friend. Let Go sold over 20 million copies. It featured three top 10 hits. Two of those hits, Complicated and I'm With You, landed in the top five. Let Go will become the top selling debut album of the year and one of the best selling of the decade. Avril also earned a total of eight Grammy nominations for Let Go, but won none. I'm With You would later be sampled by Rihanna for her 2010 album Loud on the hit song Cheers Drink to That. The media also took notice of Avril's differences from her peers, and they gave her the title of being anti-Britney Spears, basically not being sugary and sweet. But Avril immediately shut them being pinned against each other down, saying, I don't like that term, the anti-Britney, it's stupid, says Levine. I don't believe in that. She's a human being. God, leave her alone. Her follow-up to let go her sophomore album, Under My Skin, would arrive in 2004. She allegedly only had six months to complete the album and wasn't even ready to put it out, but she had to meet the deadline her label gave her. She abandoned her signature let go sound in favor of something a bit darker. It has been described as a post-grunge album and one of her best albums to date. The singles from this album weren't as monstrous as her debut album singles, but still were hits in their own right, particularly My Happy Ending, which peaked at number 9 in the States and experienced international success including in Europe. Avril wanted this song to be her lead single, however her label declined and put out Don't Tell Me as the lead single. Ultimately, Avril would get the last laugh, because My Happy Ending knocked Don't Tell Me out of the water and had a far better commercial performance. The album sold over 8 million copies and continued the winning streak that is Avril Lavigne. Around this time, Lavigne had a co-writing hand in one of Kelly Clarkson's big hits, Break Away, which was also the title track for Kelly's second album. For Avril's third album, The Best Damn Thing, she made the move to RCA Records. The Best Damn Thing up until that point was Avril's super bubblegum pop moment and her most commercial pop effort. Her first two albums seemed like a natural progression artistically, this didn't. She seemed to be going down a darker and more mature artistic route with her first two albums, and even though it's not a bad album, it's the most visible in her career that doesn't really make sense. Nonetheless, it produced some of her biggest and most iconic hits, the first being Girlfriend, a cheery pop punk song that almost sounds like an updated version of Tony Basil's Mickey. It's also reminiscent of some cheeky 70s rock. This specific moment in Avril's career sort of reminds me of Gwen Stefani. They both started out with darker images within their own right, and then they established a really commercial pop sound with their cheery, big, and in-your-face singles, and that single for Gwen happened to be Holla Back Girl, and for Avril, Girlfriend. Girlfriend is synonymous with thousands pop music at this point in time. It's been referenced in pop culture over and over, and was one of the biggest hits of the decade. It peaked at number one on Billboard Hot 100, 
becoming her first song to do so. It became the first music video to hit 100 million views, and it's probably her most recognizable song. Another major hit from this album was When You're Gone, an emotional pop rock ballad. The success of When You're Gone and Girlfriend helped propel the best damn thing to becoming the top selling album of 2007. She ruled the year, and after that, it wouldn't be a while until we heard from Avril. Avril's next album experienced multiple delays, and she actually spoke out against her label RCA during this time. This has been a really difficult record for me to create and to release, she wrote. Not only is this the most meaningful and special record I have written, it is sincere, honest, and close to my heart. But for the first time, I experienced a bunch of bureaucratic BS. People do their best when they are doing what they want, love, and it's natural for them not when you are forcing them to do something that they are not. In recent history, she has also spoken about her time with RCA, saying, The majority of the time in my career, RCA wanted me to write another girlfriend. They don't want the ballads. It's difficult to be a woman and to be heard, and people sometimes don't take you seriously. I'm highly intuitive, and I've always got a very strong gut feeling. I've always felt that I've known what's best for me to do, and I've had to fight different people on this journey over those 17 years. You make those songs because you have to, but then the stuff that's the best on record is the album tracks. I would get some songs the style I really wanted, she says. I always loved the pop rock thing and it's still who I am. I'm still proud of those songs and I wrote them. It wasn't like people wrote them and gave it to me. It was like, okay, I get it. You guys want singles that are going in this direction, fine. I'll work with you, but I'd rather be doing something else. You can't be stubborn and just do everything your own way, she says. Eventually, Goodbye Lullaby arrived in 2011. It was made in large about her divorce at the time, and featured more personal content. The album's singles included What the Hell. I feel like What the Hell is the song that her label wanted her to write, that she was speaking of in the interview, to maintain that girlfriend's success. What the Hell was a step to follow the contemporary pop sound at that time, but also seemed like a song sonically derived from the work she had inspired. For instance, what the hell is a song that you could have heard Katy Perry, Kesha, or Demi Lovato singing during this time as well? Another highlight from Goodbye Lullaby is Wish You Were Here, an introspective ballad that sees Avril showing a more emotional side. In 2013, she released her self-titled album. The album was much more lighthearted than her previous efforts and gave a little bit of classic Avril with a modern touch. Here's to Never Growing Up recalls Cheery Avril, a chanty pop song that recalls nostalgia, let Me Go is an essential Avril ballad, and the self-titled album did moderately well, and earned her another gold certification for selling over 500,000 copies in the States. However, this album did have one major failure, and that was Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty has been accused of being culturally insensitive, it's also a J-pop and dubstep influenced song. On top of the controversy, it's just not a good song. It's undoubtedly the worst single of her discography, and feels like her most uninspired song as well. After this album, Avril went away from the spotlight for a while, and while she was gone, a ludicrous theory that had been floating around for years claiming she had passed away and been replaced gained interest again. In reality, her personal life and professional life was stalled after she was diagnosed with Lyme disease in 2014. The disease left her bedridden for two years, during that time, she even feared that she might pass away, and she accepted that might be her reality. Those hard times inspired her return to music with 2019's Head Above Water, which was released under a new deal with BMG, where she had full creative control. The title track was released in 2018. It's a sentimental pop rock song, where she pleads for a higher power to help her stay alive. The song did okay on Billboard, but it was an even bigger hit on the Christian music charts. The album peaked at number one on the independent charts and did well, especially in Japan. She's amassed a huge following there and is still to this day a big star there. She's filled stadiums there before. With that aside, the story of Avril was a little complicated, but she endured a lot of great success. She has writing credits on songs by Leona Lewis, Miranda Cosgrove, Rihanna, and Kelly Clarkson. She sold millions of albums and singles around the world. She's done clothing lines and perfumes, and at this point, she is a legacy artist. She can tour the world for the rest of her life simply based off of her iconic catalog. Label troubles, Lyme disease, and divorces led her away from the spotlight for a while, but she bounced back and is continuing to do well. 
She still has a loyal fan base and a long lasting influence on artists not only from her generation, but the newer generation. She is truly the pop punk queen.